First century believers were passing through tremendous persecution at the time Peter penned his first epistle. Peter provides a healing balm for these battered believers. Don't give up, he says. He links, all through his letter, the direct connection between suffering now and coming glory. You can't have one without the other. Who leads the way? The sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. Peter mentions sufferings 11 times and glory 16 times in the five chapters. He also discusses the saints' hope, conduct, priesthood, relationships, gifts, and ministries. Of all the New Testament epistles, Peter's writing seems most like preaching. In fact, there are more than 30 imperative commands in the first letter alone. As well, Peter weaves in many personal glimpses of his three and a half years learning from the Master. Preachers sometimes comment, we're so like Peter, referring to the mistakes he famously made. Unfortunately, we aren't always like Peter in the way he learned his lessons. So what are some of these personal touches? Who could miss his statement in chapter 2, recalling his denial and restoration? For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. He's a good one to remind us to be sober and vigilant against the devil, isn't he? In fact, he tells us three times, or his reference about feeding the flock of God in chapter 5, as we recall the Lord's words to him on the shore of Galilee, feed my lambs. Five times he speaks of the sufferings of Christ, as if he was never far from Calvary in his thoughts. And who can't see him gazing into heaven on all of it when we read at the end of chapter 3, Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God. There are many more for you to find. There are 18 Old Testament quotations in Peter's two epistles. The Lord had told him that after his sifting, he should strengthen his brethren. One way he did this was by using, as good examples, those who didn't deserve to be used in that way. He used Sarah. Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, Peter writes. It was just a laugh of unbelief. And Lord is the only word Peter can salvage, but the Spirit uses it to teach reverence to husbands. Or who would use Lot as a good example? Peter does, not of Lot's faith, but of God's faithfulness. And Noah as a preacher? His family were his only converts in 120 years. But Peter says it was actually Christ preaching by the Spirit through Noah all those years. Oh, the long-suffering grace of God. Peter's second epistle is a handbook for the last days. Chapter 1 outlines the Christian's calculator. We should be adding into our faith the characteristics of the king so that we will receive an abundant entrance into his kingdom. Where do we acquire these traits? By looking into the sure word that shines in the darkness. Chapter 2, similar to the book of Jude, warns against false prophets and teachers. And chapter 3 outlines in marvelous praise God's works in the past, his hand in the present, and his plans for the future. Linked to the world that then was, the heavens and the earth which are now, and the new heavens and a new earth. There are four references to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This, Peter says, is the secret to it all. And that's our scripture snapshot of Peter's two epistles.